I think um, COVID-19 has been extremely devastating with, with a global impact. It, it really influenced the whole world. And I don't think anyone wants to have a repeat of this ever. Um, and and as, we, as we move towards the future and really thinking about preventing a pandemic from happening and not just reacting like we currently do, it becomes very important to know where it came from. Um, and we cannot really move towards the future effectively if we don't know the origin of, of the current outbreak or the current pandemic. And we cannot investigate all animals in the future. We can't go to every single geographic location. We can't test every single human or look at every ecological and environmental factors or even human behavior risk everywhere. So we need to prioritize based on what we know and estimate risk. But if we don't have the information on where the pathogens occur, what they are, what's going to lead to spillover, we cannot prioritize effectively. What does the evidence say? Is it important for us to both investigate the theory that this virus has natural origins and the one that it may have come from a laboratory accident? So, so as long as we, we don't have clear evidence, um, these questions will remain um, because people want answers. And if we can't show that there's a natural origin, then the lab theory will stay on the table. Um, so it is important to really investigate this. I, however, don't think that from my personal opinion and looking at the evidence that it is a lab leak um, because we've investigated that. We know the lab that people said was maybe involved. We know where it is. It didn't move like a natural source. We could actually go and investigate. There was teams going there. Um, and there's no evidence that that happened. Um, looking at what, what is done in that lab and, and the evidence around it, but also looking at the characteristics of the virus, it's not likely that it leaked out of a lab. So the other option is, is a natural origin, and, and that's complicated to find. Um, so we could not identify any animal source in the wet market that could be linked to COVID so far, but that doesn't mean that there's no natural source um, because it's sort of like finding a needle in a haystack mm. because there's been so many questions about the timeline, when this actually happened, um, the exact origin, what animals were present in these environments, where did these animals come from, how were they moved? So, so where do you start looking? It's just such a much broader picture to look at and try and find it. So what you're laying out sounds incredibly complex. Are you confident that we will get a better understanding of where this virus came from and how would we go about doing that? So we might, we might not. Um, so I think what we, what we need to start rethinking is that looking for the origin of, of this pandemic, COVID, should be seen in a much broader context of preventing the next pandemic. Mm. Um, so there's a high diversity of pathogens in nature globally, we know that. And there's reasons why these pathogens spill over. We need to understand the diversity out there as far as, as best as we probably can and how it can potentially transmit to other animals and humans. You've recently been named co-chair of a high-level panel which will advise four international bodies, including the World Health Organization and the UN Environment Program on how pandemic or potential pandemics emerge and how to reduce these risks. So, I mean, that's a monumental task how do you get started? What do you hope to achieve? And I mean, is it really possible to prevent the next pandemic? We have a group of people that's not just looking at virology, we're really looking at all the factors, like the name of the panel, One Health. So really bringing together animal, human, and environment, environmental health. Um, so looking at the holistic picture, what the panel hope to do is really look at the past, what worked, what didn't work, Where's the bottlenecks? Why are things not practically implemented on the ground? We've got lots of documents, lots of talks, lots of talks around tables, but is it really making a difference on the ground? And I think that is really the commitment of this panel and of the partners that we advise, that we really want to get to a practical solution that's not just about the next pandemic, but really addressing so many other issues that we're also dealing with. Um, in terms of, of our planet health, human health, and animal health. And if everybody can embrace that, then we will work towards a better future. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. It's great to speak with you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure.